and good morning to you all as we come together this morning to worship God. Welcome to you, whether you are gathered here in our church building, whether you're regularly here or whether you are visiting us this morning. Welcome to you if you're joining us from your home on Zoom and welcome to you if you're watching this later on YouTube. We come together this morning to bask, to enjoy the presence of God to know his peace, his love, his grace, and his mercy towards us. This morning in our service, we will be marking both all saints and all souls, as we remember all of those who have gone before us in the faith. And as part of this service, we will have an act of commemoration where we will be naming and lighting candles for those that we know personally who we have loved and lost. Going into this service, I'm sure most of you will be aware, following on from the announcements from the government last night, that um, over the next few weeks, we won't be able to meet like this as a church in our church building. We will still carry on meeting on Zoom, okay? So that will still be happening, and for those who don't like to join in on Zoom, we will be making sure that you have some material so that you can still, we can still all participate in the life, the worshipping life of our church together. And let's just remember, as we go through this time of lockdown, through into Advent and heading towards Christmas, that actually the promise of Christmas in Emmanuel, God with us, is relevant to us today, even before we go into Advent and into Christmas. And so whether we are here in our church building or whether we are at home or wherever, God is with us as a church family. And that does not change. And so even though we won't be able to meet together here for a few weeks, we still meet together in Christ, united in him. And so we go in hope. Okay. And we look forward to the time when we will be able to physically meet again but for today we are here and we are blessed to be here however we are joining in this act of worship i'm going to hand over to debbie now to lead us through the opening part of our service thank you paul our service this morning will begin with some words from psalm based around psalm 121 and what i love about the psalms is they're written for individuals and they are written for community. They are written for those who weep alone and those who weep together. They are written for those who praise and thanksgive to the Christ alone and to those who offer praise and thanksgiving together as a community. And what Paul said is represented in our Psalms this morning. Whatever we are, on our own or together, we meet in the presence of God. So we'll begin with words around Psalm 121. Please join in in the words in bold. O oh Lord, our God, we gather from the valleys of life, rising up from the deep shadows of our troubles to worship in the bright light of God's presence. We gather to worship the steadfast God who helps us overcome our fears and superstitions. To worship in the protecting presence of God. We gather to worship the watchful God whose attention never wavers and whose care is eternal. Come, let us worship our God who is more dependable than the mountains and more reliable than the sunrise. Amen. Our first act of sun worship this morning is a favourite of mine. It will be the Lord's my shepherd, a wonderful reminder that we are never alone. Would you please stand? my shepherd I'll not want he makes 
makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. That might have been the giveaway that I might have been humming behind the mask that my glasses have steamed up. Please sit down. For your endless mercy follows me and your goodness will lead me home. Beautiful, wonderful words of comfort. And it is through Christ's mercy that we bring ourselves to him this morning in penitence, ready to bring before him our thoughts and our deeds. Assured that his mercy is with us always. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Would you join me? Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. 
our collect for today is a reminder that as well as the commemorative act of all souls, we're also looking at All Saints Day. Would you join me as we say together, God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is going to be brought to us through Zoom by Sarah, and she's going to be bringing our reading from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, through to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning they were sown in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite Jean up now to lead us in our second reading. The reading is from John 20, verses 1 to 9. Early on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen, linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped round Jesus' hand, head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. As we come to have a look at God's word together, let's pray to begin.
Lord, as we come together this morning to look at your word, to hear your voice to us through these written words, we pray that through the work of your Holy Spirit in each of us, we would be filled with true hope as we recognize your promises towards us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we come together this morning, a big part of this service, we come to remember. But we come to remember with hope. We're here, as Debbie has said, to mark All Saints Day and All Souls Day. All Saints Day, a day in the church calendar which celebrates the men and women whose lives the church has seen as the grace of God powerfully at work. And it's a time for us to be encouraged by the example of the saints, those heroes of the faith that have gone before us. And to recall that our holiness can grow both in ordinary circumstances, but also through the extraordinary crises that happen in life. So All Saints Day But then we also come to mark All Souls Day, and in our commemoration of the faithful departed, we celebrate the saints again, but on a much more local and intimate level. All Souls allows us to remember with thanksgiving before God those whom we have known more directly, those who gave us life those who nurtured us in the faith, those who have journeyed with us, and we give thanks for their lives. And so we come for All Saints Day, we come for All Souls Day, we come to remember, we come to remember with hope. We've had two Bible readings just now. The first one from Hebrews gives us, well, I was going to say gives us a long list. Actually, it just gives us the end of a list. If you go back and read the rest of chapter 11 of Hebrews, um, there's a longer list that goes before what we heard. But this list of heroes of the faith, it says in the passage, the world was not worthy of them. We hear that list of names and what they did, their experiences in their journey of faith. And we're encouraged to be inspired by them and to continue our own walk. Though I think actually it says a run in Hebrews 12, one, our own run of faith, our own journey of obedience with Jesus. And then we had our second reading, the account of the resurrection of Jesus from John's gospel following the crucifixion and burial, where we find Peter and John running to Jesus' tomb on that Easter morning at the persuasion of Mary, who had gone there and seen the empty tomb. They run there, they look into the tomb, they're bewildered at what they see, that there are just grave clothes and no Jesus. But then seeing that evidence in front of them, the penny starts to drop. Even though it would be later at Pentecost before everything would really fall into place. They see the reality of the resurrection. And in the face of their grief over having lost their Jesus, that resurrection brings them hope. Later on down the road, as Peter and John would look back on their experience, look back on their time with Jesus, what would they remember? Well, if we jump a bit further forward in the Bible, John wrote some letters to the church. And he started his first letter by saying that Jesus, who he describes as the word of life, this word of life appeared. And he, John, and others, he says, we saw this word of life. 
we testify to it. We say, yes, this is who he was and is. And so John proclaims to his readers the eternal life that we find in Jesus. That's what John remembers. In Jesus, God's promised future of eternal life is opened up to us. What would Peter remember? Well, he wrote some letters as well to the church when he was a bit older, could look back and reflect on things. And he'd begin his first letter similarly like this. He said, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. The resurrection of Jesus leading to eternal hope. The resurrection of Jesus changes how we encounter the loss of a loved one. Because through the resurrection of Jesus, the promise, hope of God's eternal life is opened up to us. And so the end is not the end. When Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, to the church there, he made a point of telling them that in the face of their very real experience of grief and loss, and let's just say that our hope doesn't take away our grief and loss. We still experience that, but we experience it differently because Paul says that they don't grieve like those outside the church who don't have that same hope. But actually those Thessalonian Christians and we can grieve with hope because Jesus died and rose again. He was resurrected from the dead. And so God will bring with Jesus all those who have fallen asleep with him. That's the words Paul uses. There will be a resurrection. When the communion of saints will be raised up to be with the Lord forever. And so as we come together today to remember, particularly as we remember those whom we have personally loved and lost, we come together with hope. We have hope because of the resurrection of Jesus, which opens eternal life to all who believe in him. And so we remember and we remember with hope. And that hope does not disappoint us. There's one more thing that I want to say this morning, and I suppose it's as I was listening to the Prime Minister's announcements last night and thinking about the impact that that is going to have on us as a church community and thinking about this reading from Hebrews that we've had that sometimes it can be hard, can't it, to sustain that sense of hope, which is why it's really important that we have it as a promise of God. That's where the hope is rooted, in God, not in us. Because I go up and down like that, and God doesn't. God is faithful. And so that hope is, 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 is there. It doesn't change. We don't lose it. And let's remember that. But for me, it can sometimes be hard to sustain that sense of hope. And so I just want to go back into Hebrews for a moment, because this book was written to a group of early Christians who are going through a bit of a dip. They've, in the early life of their faith, they have uh, faced a degree of persecution. They've faced some of the social consequences of choosing to follow Jesus rather than just being totally embedded in the culture around them. And as time has gone by, and 
perhaps some of their initial passion and drive has worn off. It seems that the writer of Hebrews is writing to a church that has lost a bit of their energy and a bit of their drive. Perhaps they've lost a little bit of their confidence as they're facing this marginalization from the society around them. And some of them are slowly falling away from the church community and being absorbed back into the easier way of life in the community around them. Now, the writer of Hebrews responds to this in a very clear way. What the writer doesn't do is give a motivational speech or a couple of bullet points on how to do church better, make it more attractional for people. He doesn't bring out some new missional techniques that the church should be engaging with. What the writer of Hebrews does is dive into a deep study of who Jesus is in the context of God's salvation history. Who is Jesus? And what does this mean for us? That's what he does. Now, I'm not saying that we as a church are in the same place as that church that the writer of Hebrews was, was writing to. In fact, I feel at the moment we have a real sense of optimism here and we've had so much to celebrate over the last weeks in the life of our church that we've got lots to give thanks for. But I'm just aware as we go again into lockdown, as we come to another time when we are not able to meet together physically as a church and support each other in this way, As we go back into all of us being on Zoom, though, praise God for the gift of things like Zoom and how we can continue to meet together. And maybe I just speak for myself in this, but I suspect I don't. But that I think that we feel some of the tiredness of this, of the long slog of it. That sometimes it's difficult to keep that sense of hope right up first and foremost in our minds. And so in the face of this next stage of this challenging journey, I just want to say very simply this from Hebrews, focus on Jesus. As we go into a time when we cannot be encouraged by our physically meeting together, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. The cross, the resurrection, the ascension to glory of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in that we have hope. Hope for today because of the Spirit of God given to us and hope for tomorrow because of the enduring, unfailing promises of God to us, rooted in the resurrection of Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be starting an online Bible study, which I would encourage you all to have a go at, see what it's like. Let's join in with this together. We're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians and what that tells us about what God has done for us in Jesus and what that means for us now. That's just one way that we can do some fixing of our eyes on Jesus. but we focus on Jesus. We turn our eyes to him, our last. This service, before we go back into lockdown, we're going to spend time remembering our loved ones. And then we're going to spend time remembering and giving thanks for our greatest loved one, the one who has loved us the greatest, 
the Lord Jesus as we share communion together, remembering his body given and his blood shed for each one of us. We remember our true source of hope and life. And so we come together to remember and we come together to remember with hope. Thank you, Paul. Paul reminded us that our hope for our inheritance does not perish, does not diminish, and does not fade when we keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And we're going to do that together now as we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. Would you please stand if you are able? Please join me. Christ died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures, he was buried. He was raised to life on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Please be seated. It's because we have received and because we believe that we can take our concerns for the world to an arisen and ascended Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. We're going to gather our thoughts together in some prayers this morning. Would you join me? When I say Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, if you wish, the response is hear our prayer. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray especially today for France, Turkey, Syria, and America. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. We pray today for the work of the Oak Community Project, for Denise and for the volunteers who feed the hungry of this community. We thank you for the food provision across this town, for those who work tirelessly to feed your people. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. In a moment of quiet, please feel free to give those on your heart to the Lord.
Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. We give you thanks for all who've lived and believed in you, especially those we will name aloud later. Raise us with them to an eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come now in our service to the point where we will have our act of commemoration as we remember those personally whom we have loved and lost. We'll begin with some responses and then Jill and Dave are going to come out and help us as we light a candle for each person as the names that we've received are read out. But I'm aware that not everybody may have sent in a name there may be others who are still on our hearts that won't be named out loud, but that we will be thinking about as we go through this. And so the final candle that we will light in the middle is for that. It's for those who are in here, but that we haven't spoken out here. And once we have gone through the uh, lit the candles and read our names and prayed together, then we will have a song, Be Still My Soul, when it comes to that, feel free to stand or to sit. That's absolutely fine. And if you'd like to, as each name is read out, if that's a name of someone that you have asked to be remembered today, if you would like to stand at that point, then please do feel free to do that. Otherwise, and also we will all stand um, at the end. Okay. And so there are some responses that are going to come up on the screen if you would join in with the words in bold print. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, we believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. And so if I can invite Jill and Dave to come out for lighting candles. I say, hear us, O merciful Father, as we remember in love those whom we have placed in your hands. Rudolf Asselmeyer. John Bentley. Charles and Rita Blaylock. Stephen Blaylock. Pat Bloom. Kathleen Collinson. Joyce and George Cusware. Mary Agnes Daniel. Ron Darby. The Earnshaw family. Charlie Evans. Mm -hmm. 
Norman and Vera Evans. Pat Evans. Doreen and Eric Martin Fisher. Carol Gardner. Jeanette Griffiths. The Grimsley family. Holly. Wendy Jones. David Lee. James Layton. Letitia Layton. Hannah Mackay. Les Mackay. Audrey Madge. Pat Morris. The Norse family. John O'Hara. Irene Palmer. John Richmond. May Richmond. The Trotter family. Fred Wilkes. Alan Williams. Alma Williams. And we also remember those whose funerals have been held in the parish over this last year, remembering them and their families. And so we remember and give thanks for Victor Pierce, Michael Wilborn, Carol Griffiths, Joan Cotgrave, David Crosby, Michelle Brown, Eileen Holden. And as we hold a moment of quiet, we remember those whom we have just named, but with the lit candle in the center, we also remember those whom we have been naming quietly in our hearts and we remember and give thanks for them.
grant Grant to us, Lord God, God, to trust you not for ourselves alone, but for those also whom we love, and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe your power to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so may we trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The eternal God is our dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Blessed is the Lord, our strength and our salvation. And so we stand or sit for our next hymn, Be Still My Soul.
Our final act of sung worship this morning will be the song, The Blessing. Now, it's quite apt, I think, that we're going to use it today. Because some of you may remember that when lockdown first happened, the church was united. And a video was released on YouTube of various churches across the world coming together to sing this blessing over the world that they knew was about to change with this pandemic. And after yesterday's announcement of these new restrictions and the fact that we won't get to meet, certainly for the next few weeks, for me, this is a beautiful way of just blessing you and hopefully you blessing each other. So please quietly hum behind your masks to the blessing as our final act of worship today.
And so may God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all this day until we meet again and always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.